writing personal essays, our job is to bring the reader into the world of our experiences. To be so engaging and vibrant in our storytelling that the reader feels like they're right there beside us as the experience is happening to them too. This is really important in storytelling because obviously what we end up with if we don't have these specific engaging details is a pretty drab, not specific, monotone story that doesn't show you off as a writer. So today's writing move is gonna help us with this. Today's move is painting a picture with concrete details. So concrete details are specific details that actually live in our physical world. They're things that we can see, they're things that we can touch, they're things that we could all go and experience together. They're part of our communal experience. So they're not concepts or ideas that mean different things to different people. They don't require the reader to imagine something that might be not exactly what you're talking about. When we use concrete details, we are using details that everybody can relate to because we all know exactly what they mean. Let's look at Miles Howard use some concrete details in his essay, You're Never Too Old to Build Castles in the Air. Now up top, you will see I have written a version of this without using any concrete details. What do you notice about it? Like many of the kids of the 1990s, I grew up clicking the iconic bricks together to build lots of different things. So while that may be true, lots of different things and building lots of different things might conjure up really different images for me than it does for you and than it does for your best friend in your class, right? That's really subjective. We're asking the reader to do some guessing there. So instead, here's what Miles Howard does. Like many kids of the 1990s, I grew up clicking the iconic bricks together to create castles, spaceships, pirate refuges, and at the height of my precocious years, a free build recreation of Princess Diana's funeral. So Miles Howard gives us a list, a list of concrete details, very specific things he built, castles, spaceships, pirate refuges, and of course, Princess Diana's funeral. This list makes our story real, right? It brings it to life. We can, in our mind's eye, see those specific things that Miles Howard spent his time building. In a way, we get to know him better because we see these fantastical creations. He's not building schools or playgrounds. He's building castles, spaceships, and pirate refuges. We also get to see a sense of his voice and his perspective as a person when he tells us that he precociously built a recreation of Princess Diana's funeral. Now, that tells us right there he was probably a really interesting, maybe a little quirky kid. But again, we get a sense exactly of what he built and exactly of what kind of kid Miles Howard was. All of that guesswork on the reader's part is taken away and we're more fully engaged because we can more fully envision what he is talking about. Here's another example from the same essay. He could have written, every time I ducked into the Lego aisle, I would nod with approval as old themes were revived and frown as franchise sets took up space. But instead he gets much more concrete with it. He says that he would nod with approval as old themes such as the forest men were revived and frowning as franchise sets like Star Wars and Marvel took up more real estate on the Lego shelves. Again, he's not requiring any guesswork of the reader. And in fact, he's painting a picture in our mind. As he says, Star Wars and Marvel, we can picture shelves and rows and rows of those sets of Spider-Man Legos and Avenger Legos and Star Wars Legos where older, more traditional sets used to be. He's telling us details that exist in our physical world so that we can connect with them. We can see them immediately and we can understand his experience. This is maybe my favorite example from his essay. He could have written, when I got home, I dumped out the contents of the box un onto my bed. The instruction manuals were super long. But, right, the contents of the box requires us to imagine how many there were, what they looked like, and the instruction manuals were super long, requires us to think about, okay, like, well, how long is long? 
Is it like the size of War and Peace? Is it the size of a phone book? Is it a couple of pages? So Miles Howard uses concrete details. When I got home, I opened the box and dumped 26 crinkly plastic bags of bricks and castle parts onto my bed. The instruction manuals were as thick as an Ann Patchett novel. Those 26 crinkly plastic bags tells us exactly how many we can imagine 26 bags all over a bed. He even tells us what they sound like, that crinkle, we can hear it almost as they are tumbling out of the box. And when he tells us that the instruction manuals were as thick as an Ann Patchett novel, he's bringing a picture to mind for a certain number of readers. Now, even if you don't know who Ann Patchett is, right, the fact that he compares it to a novel gives us a sense of its size. But the fact that he compares it to an Ann Patchett novel, again, tells us something about his voice and his perspective. And we can imagine that well, now we know that Miles Howard is the kind of person who enjoys an Ann Patchett novel, so he would know how long one is off the top of his head, and that's the association he would make. So, where in your writing can you use concrete details, details that exist in our physical world, to take the guessing game out of reading your piece? to ensure that the reader is seeing exactly what you want them to see and exactly what you experienced. Where can you use concrete details to show your voice, to show your perspective, to reveal a little bit of something about who you are in the midst of this story? Where can you bring your story to life, make it less generic, less monotone, and more real and engaging by putting in some specific concrete details that will engage your reader and make them feel like they are experiencing this story right beside you. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure that you like and that you subscribe so that you don't miss any mini moves for writers.